Alright, so here goes another video with uh, awful camera quality, but uh, I'm gonna try my best here, alright. So here's my uh, Silver Seiko, Silver Reed, uh, what should I call it? Royal Mercury, Royal Arrow. It goes, it, it's been rebranded so many times at this point. It is the um, Japanese ultra portable typewriter created by Silver Reed. Um, just gonna, for benefit of a friend and also just for people on the internet, I guess, uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to use it. Of course, I got mine all decked out in UGA stickers. So, woo. Um, put, the, put the name of the typewriter on the, on the top, so. <laughs> um, I will say, my, my bed's a mess. I'm really tired. I, I, I'm just filming this before I go to sleep. Past midnight. So, when you get your typewriter, what you want first want to do is you want to open it. So you're going to pop these two buttons in and then lift them straight up. Um, you'll notice that I have some papers stored in mine. Um, you don't... Uh, oh shit! <laughs> Crap. That was full. Give me a second. <sighs> oh, this is going off to a, good, to a great start. <laughs> Let's try it again. So, I've got some paper in mind. The neat trick is that if you fashion some paper clips up to the top here, you can sort of load some paper in this way, and that holds it. You just want to make sure you don't want to load too much paper so that, like, there's a little bit of room, there's a little bit of room between the cap and the top of the typewriter um, so that you can put some paper in there and have it serve as an improvised paper holder, but if you put too much, it will affect how securely, how securely this thing closes. It's got two hooks on the inside. Those two hooks clamp down onto um, onto sort of these these area, these gaps in the metal here. So you so you want to make sure that those are free at the very least. But yeah, here's the cover, um, pretty standard. You pull it and stuff. Yeah, I'm not getting into this angles at all. Here's like production quality, everybody. <laughs> so. Cover goes aside. Let's look at the machine itself. So obviously you have your ribbon in here. I don't only really have black in here right now. No, I, I have a black and blue ribbon. Okay, it's really hard to tell. So you have machine here. Um and you have your ribbon here, you have your keyboard here, you have your standard space bar backspace um, you have a shift and you have shift lock margin release is going to be over here on this side your bicrum selection here so you have red so you have red and black or whatever two colors you have on your ribbon and then you have your touch selector which is h to l which is uh, high to low so high is just high it's just more resistance uh, low is less resistance um, it's not really noticeable on these kinds of machines um, but you, you're free to play with it it adjusts a little spring down here. If you open it at the top, you can you can fiddle around with it and you can see how all the mechanical parts move. I'm not gonna take too much time to do that though. I'm just gonna show you how to get it set up. So on this typewriter, you will see that. Okay, well first of all, you flip this up. This is the this is this is your paper rest, and you just be paper the paper rests on here basically. So, so 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 at at so at start, you have a lever on this side, right? Uh, this lever essentially controls whether or not you're at lock, whether or not this lever here uh, will indent one space, one and a half, or two space. So that's why you have the dot, which means it's locked, the one, one and a half, and then the two. So if you just want to get a typing, just set it to one, one and a half, or two. Any of them are fine. And then you can and then you can slide this carriage to the right. Note about typewriters, right? Um, you can always slide the carriage to the right. You cannot slide it left. 
you want to slide it left, you always have to look over here. Um, every type of will have a, 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 a carriage release lever. And I suggest, I highly suggest you have one thumb on, like, like on this little, like on ledge here, because once you pull this, it will want to slide all the way back. So, so it has a little like spring in there, basically. So like if I, so, so like if I just pull like this, right? Like it's, it, 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 it wants to go to the left. So put your thumb here, you have better control of it, you slide. Um, uh, trying to figure out what else to say. Uh, yeah, so you have carriage release here. This is your paper bale. This goes up and down. Let me show you, uh, let me just go ahead and feed the paper. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, let's see where we are from there. Uh, this specific model was originally intended for a gift from my mother, and then it it was running so late. So I ended up getting her another one, a very similar brother, ultra portable typewriter, and then I ended up keeping this one. And this was my uh, first typewriter that I took with me to college. Um, as you can see, it's very small, very compact. Uh, it's about 10 pounds-ish. It's somewhere in the ultra portable area. Typing with it a lot, having some fun with it, and you know, it fell off my bike once, uh, almost got run over by a bus. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good machine. Sorry, my, my room really is a mess right now. <laughs> um, I, will, I will just say real quick, so these little tabs up here are your margins. They, they basically controls how, like, basically from where you will be typing to where you will end. A bell will, will ding uh, once you're close to the right margin. Um, so so the bell dings just just a little bit, a few spaces before you're at the right margin. And then once you hit the right margin, margin you can't stop. You, you can't type anymore. If you want to type past that, you have to hit the margin release key, which is the M-A-R-R-E-L key down here. So you can see there. So if I hit this, for example, you will hear a click, and then I can type past that a little bit. I have, a, I have my right margin set pretty pretty far back. Um, and I guess the final thing really to know uh, is that your zero here, you have so you have dot, you uh, so you have dot one two, uh, and then zero is the is the most forward one that just releases the platen completely, platen the dent completely. So normally you can hear this click right, and that just moves it by every half line. Um, this this uh, setting at the zero just makes sure that you allows you to do fine fine adjustments on the uh, on the on the rollers here. Um, uh, let's get start. I have a black and blue ribbon in here, so that's why my text will be blue. I like the color. Your um, if you want to change out the color of your ribbon, you can find some sellers off of eBay or Amazon. Those are probably the easiest. Um, if you're a bit more hardcore, you can look for Baco's ribbons, which I've heard is really good. But yeah, you see, you see that as I, so you see that as I roll the paper in, it kind of comes up. You lift the paper bell up, and then the paper goes under it, right? And the reason it does that is just to prevent the paper from like you know just going straight up and then like not having much support because like your keys are supposed to come up and hit it at a specific angle, so. Paper bell just makes sure, just helps ensure that it's at that correct angle. Um, if your paper is awry for any reason, like this, like you inserted it and it looks like that, um, this lever all, all the way on the right side here is your paper is your paper release. So if I flick it back, that alignment that allow me to adjust it, to fix it, to like slide it around. Um, and if I if I'm in a place where I'm happy with it, then I just flick it back forward. It has to be flicked forward for you to rotate. Otherwise, if you try doing this, like it, it doesn't have any traction. So, so paper release lever. So if you have paper release lever on the right side, you have carriage release on the very, very right side. It allows you to slide it back and forth. And then you have your line selector slash lock on the on this side. Um, margins in the back. Paper rest comes up and down just to help hold the paper a little bit. And then you have your Return lever over here, so you see when I when I hit return, the paper moves. That's basically how you do it. Uh, keys, 
keys, told you about the color selector, told you about the high low space bar. I think we pretty much covered cover all the functions, so let's do a little bit of uh, typing, I guess. I will say something that a lot of typewriter folks do uh, encourage is that you should probably, when you're typing, um, especially with these, the silver cycles can be kind of hard under platen. Platen's this rubber thing in the back. It's this rubber, it's this black cylinder that helps hold the paper. Um, when the typewriters were first made, they were meant to be fresh rubber so that like they would give in a little bit. So when you have the type slug coming up, right? it hits the ink and the ink goes on the paper, the rubber on the back gives in a little bit and that was what allowed for the impression. However, it's been, you know, 50 years and it's gotten hard. So in order to help protect the rubber and also get a little better impact, uh, folks will usually suggest using like a backing sheet. So like you, so like you slide in an extra sheet of paper, right? Um, if you can't get the fit, uh, it shouldn't be too bad of an issue. Um, I, honestly, I don't, you should normally be able to slide in maybe like two or three slides of the sheets of paper into a typewriter without issue. If you're having trouble, um, use the use use the paper release. That'll that'll let you slide it in a little bit more. Um, all right, let's get started. So I think the rest of this will be mostly just a typing demonstration. You'll hear me um, ding and just you know type. Yeah, if, if, if the keys get stuck here, just flick it back. So, so I hit the margin right here, right? I'm trying to finish up the, the, the word the. I can't type anymore, so I just hit margin release, and then I can continue on. So it really depends on where you set your margins, but just know that margin release is that little exception to allow you to go a little bit further. I guess like a few things about the keyboard. Uh, most typewriters will have, well, some typewriters will have, you know, let, me, let, me, let me loop you right here. Some typewriters will have a, a one key. So you would see that as just a, you know, one. And if you want to make a, make a exclamation mark, you would do shift one. Um, however, uh, whatchamacallit. However, some typewriters might not have the one key because they removed it because, you know, Having, having an extra key basically increases cost. So some of the more cost saving or maybe more sort of uh, space saving type, well, say it was cost saving, uh, typewriters basically remove that. So if you didn't have a one key over there, you would rather, do, you, would, you would actually do a, like a one, like a, like a, like a one using a lowercase L. So like one to type 1940, I'll type L nine four zero. And there's my 1940 right there. Um, and if you want to do a exclamation mark, you would do period backspace shift or rather shift lock just because I'm doing this one hand. Um, and then eight, the apostrophe is above the eight. 
So there's my self-made exclamation mark. Um, a lot of words, if you get it wrong, you just simply cross it out with the X because there's no correction. Uh, I know there are the correct no tapes. Uh, we're not going to get into that. It's, uh, it's meant to be like a little tutorial video. Um, I will, I will say that, uh, when you do a shift lock on a typewriter, remember that also, uh, all these keys, these numbers up here are also shifted. So it's not like a caps lock of a computer where you still get numbers. They're all just everything, everything on this keyboard is now shifted to the thing above it or uppercase in this case with the letters. Um, in order to get rid of this, right, you can't just press it again. You have to hit shift, either shift, and that you hear a click and then that, that releases. So there we go for the most part. Um, you see, I typed, up, typed, typed out a little bit. The first part's in blue. It's hard to register on camera, but the second part's in black. Just showing you the bicrom selector it works. Um, and yeah. If you want to pull out the sheet of paper really quickly, you can you can just do paper release and then just slide it out like that. Um, uh, yeah, so that's about it for uh, Real Mercury, Silver Cycles, all those machines. Um, the brothers are similar, but they're slightly different in design. They have a different locking mechanism. Oh right, uh, locking. Real quick, if you're if you're gonna pack this up, right, uh, hold this, uh, hold this like. Depress the carriage release lever and allow it to slide far enough right, sorry left, and then make sure make sure that you have this uh, the line selector lever is set to the dot and that's just the lock, and then you push it right until it locks here right. So you can get it roughly in the middle and that works too, but this um, the lock makes ensures that it, it's not moving any more than it should. Um, so you have like a piece of piece of metal like literally blocking it, and that's just a bit more secure. Uh, as for the cover, pretty self-explanatory. It's a, it's a, they call these clamshell lids because, you know, it looks like a clamshell. You just simply kind of throw it on there and then just give it a little good tip. You hear a click and then you can lift it up. And there's a little ultra portable type order, typewriter for you. Good stuff.